Hey you! If you're enjoying Skyline Rem and want to help make it happen, you can apply to join our backstage team in the description of this video. If you don't have the time or means, don't sweat it. Subscribe, leave a like, and enjoy the video instead. It's... weird. For a second there, I was somewhere completely different. I went to sleep and saw a world beyond our own. And then... I woke up. It was a dream, but it was also real. I fought pirates and monsters, made friends in unlikely places, and just had fun. And it was so awesome! I've slept many times in my life, sure, but never like that. I mean, it feels like I spent weeks in there, but I was only asleep in the real world for like a night. And even if I only spent one day in that world, Man, what I do for just one more day in that world? Just let me have one more night, all right? Can I go back there again, please? Oh man, I'm not even tired. How am I supposed to fall asleep? You sit up, swinging your legs off the bed and looking around quickly. Your entire face lights up as you recognize the same cozy hotel room that you fell asleep in the day before. Or at least, you think it was the day before. Not exactly sure how time works anymore, but one thing's for certain, your hypothesis was correct! You made it back to Rem by falling asleep! Holy crap! I'm back! It worked! Yes! Uh, Ellis's voice sounds from the bed next to you. She'd be lying on her stomach, smothering her face in the fluffy tavern's pillow. Her hair, her messy hair is undone, spiking out of her head like a lion's mane. She slowly lifts her head to glare at you. Can you shut up for once? What kind of person is so excited this early in the morning? Ellis, look, you won't believe it! I just went back to my own world while I was asleep! You sure you weren't just dreaming? She raised an unconvinced eyebrow at you. No, because this is the dream. Well, uh, I mean, it's... No! She blinks at you in confusion. Look, I, I really don't know how to explain it, you state. It doesn't really make sense to me either. I, I was here in REM for almost two weeks, but when I went back to my world last night, or I, I, I guess this morning, it was like nothing changed. I was only gone for a day. You pause, making a sudden realization. Hang on, H how long have I been asleep? How long? Ellis swings her own legs over the edge of the mattress, yawning. Dude, we went to bed last night. <sighs> how long do you think you were out? 
She stands up, stretching her arm across her chest to walk over to the desk tucked in the corner of the room. So I haven't been unconscious for days. You really think I'd take care of a comatose dread? She looks back at you, grabbing her hair ribbon from the desk. I barely have the patience for you normally. You can't help but consider this new development. If you're only asleep for a night here in REM and awake for a day back at home, then that means time's moving at the same pace in both worlds is now, right? Therefore... Wait, does that mean when I go to sleep in one world, I'll wake up in the other? Wait, so you get to live two lives now? Alice looks back at you, frowning. Oh, that's pretty rigged, if you ask me. What about the rest of us, huh? What makes you so special? She sighs, picking up a couple of her golden accessories from the desk to adjust them around her arms. She narrows her eyes, considering your words. Didn't that wall in the temple say something similar? For when you sleep in one world, you awaken in another. You both stare at one another as you finish the sentence. Eventually, Alice would break the silence, scoffing. She crosses her arms and looks out the nearest window. <laughs> Man, you're telling me you got some cool temple prophecy too? What gives? Well, beats me. I didn't exactly sign up for any of this. It just sort of happened. Of course, that kind of thing just happens to you. She rolls her eyes. You've got to be the luckiest, unlucky person I've ever met. Thank you? She opens her mouth to correct you and there's a sudden knock at your door. Alice pauses, carefully walking over to the door and opening it just a crack to peek out. Hello? Oh, sorry, I hope I didn't wake you up. Juno's voice sounds from the other side. I just wanted to inform you that there's someone downstairs who wants to see you. He said his name was Kylan. Wait, Kylan's here? Look at him being reliable. Alice mumbles under her breath before turning back to Juno. Let him know I'll be down in a sec. Before Juno can get another word in, Alice closes the door on her, turning back to you with a grin. Looks like you've got another busy day ahead of you, she chuckles. Just a gentle reminder that her rent hangs in the balance of you doing a good job, yeah? Yep, got it. Good to hear, she nods. We'll head down whenever you're ready, Rex. Whoa. I'm <laughs> back again! And I can hear you guys. Hey, everyone! Hi! How are we all doing? Oh, man, I've already- I've got some stuff to look at already. Grim, thank you for the sub! And Queen, thank you for the six gifted subs. I really appreciate it. Tuki, thank you for following. Hollowfied Fox, thank you for following. Ender loves Kate, thank you for the follow. Welcome to chat. I hope you guys are enjoying the stream so far. Hello, everybody. Hi, Sweet Roll. Hi, Even Crafting. Hi, King. Hi, Galaxy Zyda. Hi, Rose Meadow. Hi, Cat Pep. Hi, CS World Lore. Hi, Yamato. Hi, Ava. Hi, Tori. Hi, Lily Pad. Hi, Dragon Sis. Oh, there's so many of you. So many. Hi, Sombrous Fox Girl. What's up, Phoenix? Hi, Thunderous Man. Hi, Lunar Gabs. All right. I can't not say hi anymore. <laughs> We're back here. I just- I, I, I slept, and I woke up in the other world, and then I slept again, and now I'm back here. Oh gosh, is that gonna happen all the time? Well, you know what? That's actually cooler. It's cooler than dreaming. I'm, like, living the dream. This is wicked! You are technically immortal in this world. Yeah, you're right, huh? I'm kind of the bee's knees. Just a little bit. Huh. It's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, we can get moving now. Sorry for spacing. <laughs> it's just as I remembered. Look at this hallway. Oh, this world is so pretty. My name is Zeta. Gotcha. Did I pronounce it right, Zeta? Huh. Oh, we're looking for Kylan, right? Where is that guy? Hmm. Kylan. Kylan. There he is! Hey, what's up? Oh, I opened a barrel. Hey, what's up, man? Oh, I, I cannot stay in my chair. Boom! You and Ellis both seat yourself at Kylan's table. He leans back in his chair with his legs crossed and a wooden mug in his hand. Took you long enough, he says casually, taking a sip of his drink. You're seriously drinking this early in the morning? Ellis raises an eyebrow. Relax, it's water, he sighs. 
You know I can't handle alcohol. Well, how did you know we were here? Kylan nods in Ellis's direction. Ellis told me the other day. How else is I going to let you know about new jobs, huh? He puts his mug down, leaning forward and placing his elbows on the table. I can't exactly have you coming down to the docks every morning. You blow my cover. So, what do you have for him this time? Alice asks, nodding towards you. Found something from someone in Astra Centrum, Kylan explains. High profile job, too. High profile means high paying, Alice smirks. Exactly. Wait, found something? I thought I just did jobs for you. We had an entire conversation last night, and you still don't know what I do? Kylan turns to you slowly, blinking rapidly. Go easy on him. I told you he was a moron. Okay, well, it's not my fault. You both suck at explaining things. Oh my god. Kylan smooths back his bangs. Look, Rex, my job here isn't to be your employer. I've got enough going on as it is, and I can't go around handing out gigs like candy. He looks back at you with a serious expression. Instead, I take my time and I listen. I go around the city and gather intel, and if I find anyone who needs an extra set of hands, I hand it off to someone like you. Basically, he finds odd jobs for people who are unemployed or are having difficulty paying for stuff on their own. Ellis chimes in. Oh. So... This job's from someone else? An important someone else, Kylan nods. This request comes from a noble woman. Her name is Lady Edith Windsor, head of the Windsor family. She's looking for someone to help her locate some missing books from the Stelliform library. Ellis scoffs. <laughs> you seriously came all this way to give us a fetch quest? Last time I checked, Ellis, you don't have the finances to be picky with your jobs. Kylan shoots back at her. Additionally, due to Lady E, the separate class status, she's willing to pay quite the hefty sum to whoever's able to complete a request. So if you want a piece of the action, I'd suggest you report to her as soon as possible. Early bird gets the worm after all. Why didn't you start with that, huh? Ella shoots up from her chair. Come on, idiot, let's get moving. What, 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 already? I didn't even get breakfast, Ellis. You'll get breakfast later. She pulls you up out of the chair. This is time sensitive, Rex. Let's go. Ah, okay, 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 wait up. All right, let's go. Fine. Oh, my. Can never rest around her. Ever. Oh, man, but I don't get bored of that sight. Look at that. No, right, sorry. Oh. Look at this place. It's gorgeous. Well, I didn't go this way last time. Whoa. I think I glanced out in this direction. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Thanks, so what do you think your title should be? Um... Super, ultra, mega, powerful, uh... You know what? I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> Dude! This place rocks! What the heck?! This street is huge! There's so many people! <laughs> Look at that. Oh, and there's a lot of side paths, too. I wonder what they're doing over there. Oh, uh, uh, th the city. It gets bigger, I swear, every time I walk through it. Hello! Good morning! Whoa! Is that like a bridge? No, 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 I saw what this was last time. It's like the, um... It has water in it, right? What is it called? What are these things called, chat? Aqua something? Aqueduct, that's right. They're called aqueducts. Huh. It's so cool. It's huge. Look how far it goes. Alright, it, it, wh where the heck did Ellis go? Ellis? Uh, Ellis. Ellis! Uh. Crap. Well, she couldn't have gone far. She was walking this way, right? I guess you can just keep going this way then. What's this? This place is so huge. Look at the banners. 
so amazing. Alice! I wonder where she... You look around the streets quickly. Where did Alice go? She was moving so fast you couldn't keep up with her. She has to be around here somewhere. She couldn't have gone too far without you, right? You can't help but sweat. It's still pretty new to the city, and this area is entirely foreign to you. Just as you were getting a hang of Carpera docks in the farm marketplace... Psst. Hmm? You look around, trying to pinpoint where the noise came from. Psst! Dread! You there! You see a hand extending out from a dark alleyway. Curiously, you walk over towards the hand, peering into the darkness to make out an unfamiliar figure. Most of their body would be covered by a long and flowy crimson cloak, which extends all the way down to their ankles. They would also wear a hood over their head, obscuring your view of their face. Uh... Hello? You seem like a... fellow intellect, they state with a chuckle. Their voice would sound like that of a young man. And I couldn't help but notice... That thomic gauntlet on your arm. Uh... What about it? How would you like the chance to study an artist's powerful magic beyond your wildest dreams? The cloaked figure, presumably male, raises his arms grandly. The ability to wipe out your enemies with the snap of your fingers? Heck yeah! Sign me up! The man chuckles under his breath. <laughs> you seem quite eager. In that case, if you're truly interested, and all you have to do is join me in my research and study, and I can assure you that even the darkest corners of Thomcraft shall reveal themselves to you. Do we have a deal? He holds out his hand. <laughs> yeah, no doubt we have- Don't. Almost instinctively, you withdraw your arm just as you are about to shake the man's hand. Your heart beats quickly inside your chest, and a chill runs down your spine. Well, do we have a deal or not? The cloaked man would grow impatient, shaking his hand in front of you as if to remind you of its presence. Did he not just hear that voice? You know, on second thought, I'm, I'm a good man. Oh, come on! Powerful magic beyond your wildest dreams! Remember that part? This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity here! Yeah, I hear you. But I think I'm okay for now. Uh, thanks for the offer. Before the hooded figure can say anything else, you turn away from him and walk back out into the open. Okay! What the- I, I don't know what that was about, but, you know, that was something that just happened. So we're just gonna move away from- I Without any warning, you find yourself intercepting someone else's path, running straight into them. You knock your skull against the metal of their armor, causing it to stumble backwards and instinctively bring a hand up to your head. No! No! Ow! My head! Hey, watch where you're going next time. The person would speak to you in a low and gruff voice, so gruff that it almost sounds forced. You glance up at the individual quickly, shaking your head to try and stop it from throbbing. A young man, no older than you, stands there with his arms crossed. He has dark hair that hangs loosely in front of his narrowed eyes. <laughs> Jeez. Sorry, man. My bad. The guard glances behind you at the street you just came from before looking back at you. You seem to be in a hurry. He frowns, leaning forward. Being in a hurry is fairly suspicious. It is? You wouldn't happen to be hiding something, would you? A guard steps closer, trying to get a good look at you. You just blink at him in confusion. No, no. I'm just trying to find my friend. There's a long and awkward silence between the two of you and the guard, before eventually he backs up, shrugging his shoulders. That checks out. He clears his throat, giving a respectful salute. <clears throat> Excuse my suspicions, sir, however reports of suspicious activity have been made in this district of Erwin, and I've been dispatched by my superiors to investigate. He motions to the path behind you. Did you perhaps see anything suspicious on your way here today? No. Nothing I can think of. 
Why did it get punched? Oh, that's why. I see. Thank you for your report, sir. I'll go ahead and- There you are, moron! You look to your left as Ellis would rush forward, taking you by the arm quickly. I swear to Unity, it's like you're not even like you can follow simple directions. She slowly turns towards the guard. Uh Oh, Ellis! Hey! I'm assuming you're his friend, miss. The guard turns to Ellis. She laughs nervously, and you can't help but notice that as soon as she saw the guard, she started to sweat. Him? <laughs> she motions to you, awkwardly laughing. <laughs> it depends. Uh, what did he do? She asks her last question quickly, lowering her head at the guard and stepping away from you. What? Hey! He didn't do anything, miss. The guard states, just answering a couple of questions. Oh! She heaves a breath of relief, stepping back closer to you. Ah, then yes, this unfortunate train wreck's with me. Now, if you'll excuse us, we won't take any more of your time. She harshly tugs you away from the guard, hissing in your ear. You just had to get lost, didn't you? Well, I didn't do it on purpose. Well, walk so fast next time. Is it talking with a guard? Didn't I tell you I have a problem with authority? Why, you weren't even there. What else was I supposed to do? Walk away quickly. What well, that would have looked more suspicious. Then don't walk suspiciously. She groans, letting go of you to massage her temples. She casts a quick glance at the guard you were talking to, watching him return to his patrol. Ugh, seriously. Just keep up and be more careful with who you go talking to. Now, no more wasting time. Remember what Kylan said? This job is time sensitive. We have to be the first to take the job if we want the money. I got it, I got it. So where's the library from here then? Not that far. Thankfully, you were actually wandering in the right direction. It's this way. Okay. Ah! There she is. <laughs> oh, Ender loves cake. Thank you for the sub. And Moon Crazy, thank you for the follow. Welcome to chat. Mexican with a title for you? Shoot, I want to hear it. That was uh, strange. I knew who that guy was in the alley. It was definitely weird, but, um... No, not suspicious. Just weird, I guess. That guard seemed cool, huh? Magic orb, should we try to collect? Well, we've got one! I don't know how we'd go about getting more, though. What? This is another aqueduct! Look at it! It's huge! And it's diagonal! It's a diagoduct! Diagoduct. I like that. I'm, co I'm coining that. What is this? That is a what? That is a killer building. Look at that. It's huge. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's massive. It's like a mini palace. I wonder what's in there. Whoa. Whoa. What? There's so many buildings. What is this? This one's huge. Whoa! <laughs> Yo! What? <laughs> Wait, this is enormous! It's bigger on the inside. Wait, how is it bigger on the inside? <laughs> Look how many books! I can't even reach that top shelf. How do you reach that top shelf? <laughs> Look at that. Lower your voice. Oh, yeah, it's a lot. Look, the lock. It's a top shelf. It's so tall. It is massive. They have ladders. <laughs> they have ladders. You gotta move around. Okay, where are we going? Over here? Hello. Who is this? You and Ellis walk into the Grand Library. You crane your neck, looking up at the wide spiral staircases that follow the shape of the building. Shelves and shelves of books would line the walls, creating small corridors and crannies. There'd be a couple of seating areas, where you notice the small groups of people gathered with their own stacks of books. Whoa! This place is huge! That's one word for it. Ellis rolls her eyes, putting her hands behind her head as she walks forward. Seems more pretentious, if you ask me. You ignore Ellis's comment 
continuing to follow her as she walks forward. She stops at a circular reception desk in the center of the circular chamber. <laughs> you glance over her shoulder and notice two women standing on the other end of the other side of the desk. One of them would be wearing a rather professional attire and has a frantic look on her face. The other would wear a red regal dress with perfect curly ginger locks flowing down her back. Huh. The two of them wouldn't immediately notice you, discussing something between one another. You can make out some of their words as you get into closer to the desk yourself. These are the names on file, my lady. The professional woman hands the regal woman a collection of papers. I see. And no contact information on this one here? No, my lady. Unfortunately, they left before I could ask them. Alice glances back at you before nodding at the two women, clearly motioning for you to speak with them. Uh, 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 uh. <clears throat> Are either of you Lady Edith Windsor? The two women turn to you and Alice. The one in the regal red dress would turn to you cautiously, although she'd put on a tired smile. Yes, that's me. What can I do for you today? We heard that you could use some book help, Alice awkwardly says. Mm-hmm, what she said. Immediately, you notice Lady Edith's face light up. She hands the other woman the papers and approaches the desk to meet you both. My goodness! I know that word spreads quickly, but I'll have to admit that I'm rather surprised at the turnaround. She gives you both a respectful curtsy. Thank you so much for coming. And you are? Oh, uh, I I'm Rex, and this is... I'm Alice, Alice states, nodding to Lady Edith. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintances, Rex and Alice, Lady Edith states. Now that you're here, I can only assume you are already aware of my predicament? Yeah, something about missing books, right? Yes, she confirms. It seems there are several books that have been checked out recently, but are now long overdue. Now, if it were just one or two books, I could simply have either myself or Willow here go collect them. However, there's quite a few that are simply unaccounted for, and Willow has her own duties at the library she must attend to, so I couldn't simply ask her to find them all herself. The professional woman at her side, presumably Willow, steps in. Really, my lady, I don't see why I must resort to outside help. It's simply some overdue books. What if the culprits are all just... busy? I would hate to deprive them of a good read. Well, can't they just check it out again in that case? Precisely, Lady Edith nods. Besides, what sort of precedent would it set for the city of Erwin if I were to become so complacent with due dates? It would seem careless. She brings a hand to her heart. As the owner of the Stelliform Library, it's my duty to ensure knowledge is readily available to anyone who seeks it. By leaving these books missing, the public is deprived of access to these works. Lady Edith shakes her head with a resigned sigh. <sighs> I mean, none of these learned so I mean none of these are learned souls ill will, but they are more than welcome to check out the books again if they're so inclined. Huh. Alice leans over to whisper in your ear. Leave it to a noble woman to have such lofty views and ideals. Wow, so what? You got a problem with nobility now, too? Shut up. She glares at you before looking back at Lady Edith as she continues. Therefore, seeing as you're the first to come here to my aid, could I trouble you to help me find these books and return them to the library? Lady Edith implores you, her brow furrowed in worry. Yeah, I mean, sure. Doesn't sound too hard. Wonderful! She exclaims, a smile spreading across her features as she turns to Willow. Willow, dear, you still have those papers, yes? Yes, my lady, right here. Willow passes the papers from before back into Lady Edith's grip. She accepts the papers, shuffling through them before pausing, tracing her finger down a list of names before stopping on one. Ah, right here. This shall be the first book you retrieve. It was checked out 29 days ago by Lieutenant Quinn O'Brien. Wait, Lieutenant? So is that one of the guards? That's right, Willow steps forward to confirm. Lieutenant Quinn is a member of the Aegean Vanguard. Or I think it's Aegean, yeah. Is a member of the Aegean Vanguard. I believe I've seen her patrolling this area in the past, so hopefully you can find her nearby. Looks like it's your lucky day then, Rex. Alice pats you on the back. You've got yourself a walk in the park. Oh, 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 me? What about you? Well, you run around Arrowwind trying to fetch books. Ellis starts, walking over to a nearby table and chair. I'm gonna sit right here and take a fat nap. Yes, as she said, Ellis would sit, 
putting her hands behind her head and propping her feet up on top of the table. What? So I gotta do all the work again? Need I remind you that yesterday I was the one who had to go buy more stationery after you spilled ink all over mine? Ellis glares at you. Besides, I told you from day one that you'll be doing all the heavy lifting while I look after our finances. This isn't my job. It's all yours. Just trying not to mess it up, okay? She chuckles at the thought, closing her eyes. Although, if you somehow do manage to mess up something so easy, I might actually be impressed. This job seems pretty idiot-proof. And it pays well! Ugh. Whatever. <sighs> Fine, then. We'll tackle all this. And those cake, thank you for the 300 bits! I really appreciate that. Huh. This library is so tall, though. Look at that! I have no- I, I, I cannot even jump and come close to touching that. The Aqua Dreamer. Oh, that's pretty cute. I like that king. Huh. Oh, man. I think I heard someone say that there's no way you could ever read all the books in this library in one lifetime. I think one of you guys said that. I think I have to agree. There's so many. It's so impressive, you know. In the real world, I never really have the time to read books, but... This place? Well, if Ellis ever gives me a break... Maybe I'd get the chance. That'd be kind of cool, huh? Wow. Your book count is at nine? <laughs> We're already reading more then. Let's see. Uh, do you age in this world? I wonder, yeah. Would I age with myself? Hmm. Okay. I'm about to straighten my hair. Ooh, have good luck and have fun with that, queen. Shy lived in a library like this, right? It's massive. Okay, but we need to look for um, a book from Lieutenant Quinn O'Brien. Crap, how are we supposed to find a lieutenant? The city's huge! Oh, maybe we can ask someone? I just have to know who to ask, I guess. Hmm. Who could we ask? Who would know where a lieutenant is? Maybe we can get to the main street. That might help. Let's try to get back there then. How did we get over here in the first place? Is it that way? Or is it this way? We'll go this way. <laughs> we'll hope. It's so beautiful looking. That building is enormous. Whoa, is that the deposit of the aqueduct? Oh no, I want to check that out. Wait, look at this. It's a little park. And there's a lake! Or a pond. Sorry, now this is a pond. <laughs> is it O'Brien or is it O'Brien? Oh, I don't remember. Or picnics. Yeah, I think I just saw a picnic blanket. Not a lagoon? No, it's not a lagoon. Or the aqueduct's like a water slide. I don't think I can flow up the current. That'd be so cool. Maybe we could jump in it from the top and just ride down it. That would be wicked. There's a swing! Wait, that's amazing! Oh, I dashed. <laughs> this is so beautiful. There is a little picnic blanket. Oh, wow, this place is so amazing. Is this another building? There it is! It's like a, it's like its cousin. They're so similar. I wonder what this one is. I can vaguely see stuff inside. Huh. So cool. Yeah, it's a water slide. She'd be rested by the guards if you used it as a water slide, but that's a water under the bridge, am I right? You're right, that has to be the coolest water slide I've ever seen. It would be worth it. Actually, I'm not looking into getting arrested by the guards. So they're called the Aegean Vanguard? That's pretty cool. That's a really, really boss title. Right, well, we're back on the main street now. Right? Yeah, because these streamers are here. Okay, we just gotta look around somewhere. Hmm. The barracks? Barracks. Barracks? Do I know where barracks are? We are placing it lost now. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're on the street. We cannot get lost in the main street, right? Only if we go off of it. Uh, I'm, I'm paying close attention. Oh, wait, it's this guy. Hold on. Maybe he can help. 
You noticed the same guard that was patrolling the streets of Astra Centrum before, who he'd be walking up and down the streets of the district as he was before. He'd glare at anyone that passes him, evidently scanning for any suspicious activity. He certainly seems diligent, and he appears to take his job seriously. You consider the facts. This guy seems to be a guard, so he must be part of the Aegean Vanguard. Therefore, maybe he'll know where to find the lieutenant you're looking for. Yeah, this guy! You confidently approach the guard, trying to look as inconspicuous as possible. He notices you almost immediately and gives you the same narrowed gaze as before. Alt, state your business. Hey, remember me? I'm a dread from before. He looks you up and down. Do you have any suspicious activity to report to me today? Um... Nope, uh, no suspicious activity. I, I just had a question. State your question quickly. I have to return to my patrol. He squints, looking left and right with a determined gaze. There's something strange afoot, and it's my duty to find it and end it. Right. I, I was just wondering if you know where Lieutenant uh, uh, Quinn O'Brien is? And why exactly are you looking for an Aegean lieutenant? He frowns at you, leaning forward. Seems fairly suspicious, if you ask me. What? Chill, dude! I was literally just sent to get a book from her. That's it. Hm. The guard straightens his back once more before pointing towards the hill where Lieutenant Agate is located. Latona Gate is located. Lieutenant Quinn is currently in the Latona Barracks. You should find her on the training grounds at this time. Latona Barracks. Training ground. Alright, thanks, man. Right, the, the training pit. I'm so dummy. Right, okay. Well, that's useful. At least we know she's there. Let's see. Nathan09 anime at. Thank you for following. Welcome to the stream. The lieutenant didn't return a book. I bet it pretty sus that a guard's not following such a simple rule. <laughs> pretty suspicious behavior, if you ask me. Hello, Sundrop. Welcome to chat. I almost said Moondrop. But you are a sun drop. Thanks, I'm here on my mobile. Hello, Celestial Angel. Oh, this is so amazing. Those are walls. <laughs> That's so funny, Thunderous Man. Everyone being designed like, hey, so we need to build the main city roads. How do we organize them? Eh, who cares? Just draw random lines on a map. <laughs> it's a massive city. Okay, let's see. It was over here, right? That sand pit. Hmm. Let's see. Right over here, yeah? So these are the barracks, yeah. And the- what? Wait, it's the guy again! As you approach the training grounds, a flash of color would quickly catch your attention out of the corner of your eye. You quickly glance in the direction to find the figure in the crimson cloak standing near a stray weapon rack. Hmm? You can't help but stare at him as he fiddles with a sleek silver dagger. He holds the blade up to his face, gawking at it as it gleams in the sunlight. He brings a couple fingers up to the edge of the blade, although he quickly withdraw them in pain. Ow! Yep, yeah, definitely sharp. Ha! Ah. He shakes his hand out in irritation before looking around quickly, as if to ensure no one saw him. Eventually, his gaze falls on you. Yo. Ah! You again! He exclaims, quickly trying to hide the dagger in his cloak. However, in the process, he would fumble with the blade and almost drop it back in the sand. He quickly catches it and straightens himself up, trying to act as natural as possible. What are you, uh, doing there? I'm... He takes a moment, looking around for an excuse before looking back down at the dagger. I'm... Polishing... This dagger. For its sanitary purposes. No other reason. Slowly, he grabs a corner of his cloak, beginning to use the fabric to wipe down the blade awkwardly. Yeah, that's fair. Who knows where those daggers could have been? Yes! Exactly. Ahem. There's an awkward silence. So, have you reconsidered my offer? I'm good, man. Dang it. Alright, Lieutenant Quinn O'Brien. Where are they? Hello. Hello. Whoa. Sharp sword. Cool sword, though. Uh, ooh. 
Who is this? As you walk onto the sand, your attention is immediately caught by a particular guard training in the center of a fenced-off area. Her uniform would look different from the other guards scattered about the area, although she would share the same colors as the rest of the Aegean Vanguard. She would have a broadsword grasped tightly between her two hands, which she uses violently against a nearby dummy. Eventually, she ends her attack with a swift beheading of the dummy before planting her sword in the sand, wiping her brow. Yeah, she definitely seems like lieutenant type. Oh boy. You approach the woman, eyeing the sword and the headless dummy cautiously. She stares at the dummy's corpse for a moment before scoffing, dusting off her hands and moving to leave the fenced off area. However, she finds you directly in her path. Hmm? She stares at you in confusion before looking around the rest of the training area. <sighs> Sir, this area is off limits to civilians. I'm going to have to kindly ask you to move back to the sidewalk. Uh, uh, are you Lieutenant Quinn O'Brien by any chance? She pauses, raising an eyebrow. Yeah, that's me. Who's asking? Uh, I'm Rex. Uh, Lady Edith sent me from the library. Uh, you have an overdue book. Huh. She just blinks at you, expect as if expecting you to say more. Well, is that it? You came all this way just to pick up an overdue library book. Yeah, that's it. She clicks her tongue in slight surprise at your answer. Didn't expect this Stelliform library to be so vigilant. <sighs> Alright then, I'll comply. What sort of lieutenant would I be if I didn't abide by the rules? I'd be just like that useless captain in Carpera. But captain? What, you mean Captain Lane? What? This time she snaps her head in your direction, quickly shaking her head. <laughs> of course not! Why would you think I was talking about Captain Lane? He's the perfect example of what a member of the Aegean Vanguard should be. Humble, strong, and a true military genius. It's no wonder he was promoted. She scoffs. I'm talking about the other captain. Wait, there's another one? How many are there? Just the two, but if you ask me, Captain Lane is far more qualified than his associate. <sighs> but that's... not the point. You said you were here for a library book, right? Let me go and grab that for you. Oh, right, thanks. Lieutenant Quinn shuffles by you quickly, walking into the Latona barracks. She would walk with so much purpose as she unlocks the doors and swings them open, vanishing from your sight. It wouldn't be too long until she returns, a small book in her hand. She approaches you with the book and begins to hold it out to you, but she would pause, her face turning a bit red. <clears throat> you were definitely sent by Lady Edith, right? Uh, I mean... Yeah? So no one else will know this book was in my possession? Uh, I guess not. No one except the people who work at the library. Good, good. Here you are, then. <clears throat> she hands you the book quickly, looking to the right in an attempt to hide her embarrassment. And you raise an eyebrow at her behavior before looking down at the cover of the book. You would see a man and a woman. The woman would be wearing noble garments, while the man would be wearing clothes reminiscent of a butler or a servant. And you read the title out loud. Worlds Apart? It, it was an enticing read! Quinn snaps at you before covering her face with her hand. Just don't tell anyone, will you? I have a reputation to uphold. I don't need the guards in my division learning about my interests in the novels of E. Diane. Right. Tell Lady Edith that I apologize for the trouble. She continues, walking back to her abandoned broadsword. Now, if you'll excuse me, I should be returning to my training. Thank you for your service to the Stelliform Library, Rex. She glances back at you. Hopefully we won't be seeing much more of one another in the future. Given my position, I fear those circumstances would be far less... civil. That's not foreboding at all. You have fun training, Lieutenant! Whew. We got a book. Worlds Apart by E. Diane. No, I don't want to read this. We're just going to bring this back. <laughs> huh. Who would have thunk it? I guess there are romance novels in this world, too. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> you know, I I've already read one romance book before. I, I, I won't need to read another. Let's see. 
library is not that far either. We're just gonna walk our way over. Which I don't mind. The view of this city is breathtaking. It's pretty cool to walk through it. How long is this book? It's like moderately sized. I'm gonna predict it's probably part of a series. It's not like uh, Harry Potter thick, I don't think. Like I could toss this around between my hands. Let's see. How we, it was on the right over here, right? Oh, hello, um... I don't remember his name. Guard? <laughs> <laughs> was it this way? No. It's probably more this way. Oh, I'm already getting lost. <laughs> How do I get back there? The guards seem pretty cool. That guy definitely seems cool. And the, uh, that lieutenant. Oh, she had moves. That was really impressive. So did Lane, honestly. These guys mean business. I guess they're seriously trained. Huh. Alright, who's this way? That name is amazing. Guard? Yeah. I got a strawberry shortcake. <sighs> Ooh, library. After the awakening, I assume they need all hands on deck to defend the city from monsters. Yeah, true, actually. It makes sense. I guess they would have to be pretty skilled. What's your favorite treat? Cheesecake. I love cheesecake. Oh, well, I'm back. I got the book. Here you go. You walk back into the library, still looking down at the curious book in your hand. You hold the cover close to your chest in an attempt to be discreet. After seeing what Lieutenant Quinn told, could do to a dummy, truth be told, you're not too interested in seeing what happens if you get on her bad side. You walk back up to the counter, where Lady Edith would be waiting. Alice would be seated exactly where you left her, although she wouldn't be asleep. Instead, she'd be flipping through a couple of the books in front of her casually, her eyes skimming over the pages. You wouldn't see Willow nearby. Welcome back, Rex, Lady Edith smiles. Have you retrieved the book from Lieutenant Quinn O'Brien? I think I did. Is this it? You offered up the book to Lady Edith, but before she can accept it, Ella speaks up. <gasps> Wait a second! Ellis walks over. Stands, walking over to the two of you and snatching the book away from you. Suddenly, you see Ellis's eyes widen and... Sparkle? This is one of E. Diane's novels! Well, I'm sorry, what? Do you know of E. Diane? Lady Edith raises an eyebrow at Alice. Duh! She's only one of my favorite authors of all time! Alice exclaims in excitement. She's criminally underrated. Lady Edith brings a hand up to her chin, hiding a small smile. <laughs> I wouldn't have anticipated that someone like you would enjoy romance novels. <laughs> yeah, Alice. I didn't know you enjoyed romance novels. You look over at Alice as she stares in your direction, vacantly. So what, huh? You think I'm not allowed to have a little fun here and there? She grabs you by the shoulders. The tension between the lead characters and the well-written dramatic climaxes! I've read all her works, works cover to cover! Okay, Alice. You notice Lady Edith smirk as she brings her hand away from her face, giggling. <laughs> I don't think I've ever met someone so invested in these works. Admittedly, when I wrote them, I just wanted an outlet to express myself. Yeah, I can definitely feel the self-expression and- Wait a minute. She turns back to Lady Edith in utter shock and awe. When... You... Wrote them? Plot twist? E. Diane is my pen name, she explains. The E stands for my first name, Edith. And Diane is my middle name. Oh my god. Alice stares at her, as if an angel just descended from the heavens. You're actually the author. I might die right now. Okay, uh, well, but please don't. Ellis turns to you sharply, taking you by surprise. You're telling me some dimwit refused to return this book to the library where it belongs? How dare they? Now, now, Ellis, Lady Edith laughs. There's no need to get so worked up on my behalf. I'm happy that the lieutenant enjoyed this book. That is why I wrote them, after all. Yeah, well, if the book was in here right now, I could have been the one enjoying it, but no! Okay, well... Were there any other books you wanted me to get? Ah, yes, there are several more. Lady Edith nods. 
Uh, this next one should also be rather simple to retrieve. Let's see. She shuffles through more of the papers on her desk carefully. Meanwhile, Alice would look over the cover of the newly returned book curiously, muttering under her breath. <gasps> Wait, I don't think I've even read this one. Lady Edith straightens up, a single paper in her hand. Here we are. It was checked out by Ivy Gates, who was the head chef and owner of the Flying Fish Restaurant down in the farm marketplace, she explains. The book has been checked out for a total of... 34 days. Flying Fish? Never heard of the place. It's quite the hot spot for oceanic cuisine, Lady Edith states. I'm certain you'll be able to find her there. She gestures as she speaks, trying to indicate the direction you should go. It's in the far marketplace, near the entrance to the Carpera docks. Just as you did before, let her know that you're there on my behalf, and you should have no problems. That sounds good. I'll be right back. Okay. And Alice is immediately reading that book. Okay, let's let her be. <laughs> Wait, I shouldn't have this any... Blech! All right. Okay. Huh. Let's see. Now, farm marketplace. I've been there before. I just gotta remember how to get back there. Ah, oh, hello, Mr. V or MRV. I'm not sure how you want that pronounced. I'm watching you on YouTube, and I just got into your stream. Well, welcome. I hope you're enjoying your time. And clam chatter, Rex, you need some? I actually do like clams, so that doesn't sound bad to me. <laughs> Gotta sift to find what Alice writes in her spare time. I'm not even surprised she was a fan of that romance novel. Honestly, I'm kind of happy for her, though she does deserve to get teased for it. <laughs> I did too, I was on episode one. Oh, well, welcome, Tuki. <laughs> All, any form of live stream that ever happens on my channel will make its way to YouTube about a week later. So you guys will be able to review this on YouTube as much as you want. And I definitely encourage you to. It uh, really helps me out with the algorithm on there. I've been blowing up recently and it's making me so happy. But it also makes streams like this that you're watching right now possible. So yeah. Let's see. Where am I going? I think I need to head back towards Latona, which was this way. And loved your character model. It's amazing. Oh, thank you. I was on episode 3, I was binge watching. Ah, yeah. It's definitely serious worth binge watching. Those 14 hours worth of content that are already on YouTube are. Chef's kiss. Love them. So well made. Yeah. Double tips that showed up on screen. Thank Candy Queen for those. In fact, thank Candy Queen for a lot of things you see here, but there's a little, obviously a lot of other people involved too. Anyway, where am I going? Farm marketplace. Flying fish. I just remember getting lost in the farm marketplace. Who knows, maybe we'll get lost hard enough that we'll stumble across the flying fish. I just gotta look around enough. It was near the edge of it, right? So we should be able to find it pretty easily if long we go to the other end. <laughs> thanks, yeah. I see you better. Thank you for keeping track. <laughs> Let's see. We're almost back up here. This uh, gateway thing is so cool. Like, look at that. That's amazing. I love this. Okay, we're back here. And if I remember correctly, it's that way. We need to go now. <laughs> oh, I'm glad to hear that, Zamariah. Oh, thank you, Tuki. Oh, let's see. This way? Oh, not this way. We gotta go more this way. I think. I hope. Is it that way? No? Oh, man. I don't know where I'm going. Let's see. Oh, thank you, Ender Loves Cake. I appreciate that. I hope doesn't inspire confidence, Rex. Oh, no, 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 no need for hope. Look, it's right here. Oh, that view is nuts. Look at that. This place is on such wild elevations. Jump the walls. I'm not jumping. Nah, that's how I break an ankle. No, 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 no jump. No jump. <laughs> Excuse me. Let's get on this way. Do a flip! <laughs> Jump on the rooftops, faster travel. Yeah, faster travel to prison, I bet. 
Remember when you fell in the ocean? Yeah, I remember that. That's only a few weeks ago. Or a couple of days? I, honestly, I'm not I'm not sure anymore. This might be crazy depending on the US, but it's not crazy enough to jump. Yeah. <laughs> well, look at these houses. These are cool. They're on like the side of this cliff. It's a prison, just don't get caught. <laughs> Hello. Hmm. Ah, here's like this little tiny square over here. Look at how cute it is. I think this is the one that, yeah, it had the tiny little pond in the middle. Look at that. where to go. Everyone gets nicer and nicer the more we explore. Absolutely. Like, look at that tree. That's so cool. And it also has a swing! We need to get to the other end. Because we walked to the, uh, what was it? The Carpera docks before? So it's probably near there. So we just need to get near the entrance to that one and then look around. And I think it's this way. Yeah, right. It was in the marketplace more towards the docks, yeah. Oh, thanks, Ash Guerrero. I hope I said that right. Alec Toaster, thank you for the follow. Welcome to stream. Hmm. I have no idea. Wait, okay, I think it's over here. I think it's right over here. Thanks, why do you like swing so much? Maybe it's the kid in me. Okay, yeah, so it's down there. So it's gotta be somewhere around here, right? Just a look around. Is it that? No, it's not that. Is it that? Wait, it has chairs outside. Oh, it has seats. I think this might be it. Is this the front door? No, no way. Hold on. Oh, thanks, dude. I appreciate that. Man, this is a golden retriever. <laughs> Okay. Right. Ooh, there's a building in there. All right. Or there's a light in that building. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. Is this it? I think this is it. What? Is it... <laughs> as soon as you walk into the restaurant, you notice a familiar figure sitting at the table nearest the door. He'd have a steaming plate in front of him, which he's devouring without a care in the world, even as some of the sauce stains his cribs and cloak. It's the hooded guy again! Aha! You! And the man looks up, pointing at you in an accusatory manner. He would still be in the middle of chewing his food while he does this. I see we eat much of our dude! Yeah, apparently. His jaw tightens and he leans forward. He puts a hand up to the side of his mouth, trying to keep your conversation private, despite the public location. Are you following me? Uh... Nope. Just a coincidence, I think. Oh. His shoulders slump, and he turns back to his lunch. However, he perks up and looks back at you. <gasps> Have you changed your mind about the- That's gonna be a no too. Shoot. Okay, uh, anyway, um, is, are, are you it? Is this the- The floor- A floorboard creaks under your foot as you cross the restaurant. Almost immediately, a girl shouts from behind the counter, clapping her hands together. A new customer! Ayo! Ayo! A chorus of voices shot from around the restaurant, from waiters to cooks to cooks in the to cooks to cooks in the kitchen. Wow, nice. You approach the counter, the girl's smiling as you stand before her. Welcome to the flying fish! My name's Ivy, and I'll be taking and making your order today. How can I help you? Oh, wait, so you're Ivy Gates, right? That's me! Ivy Gates is my name, and cooking great food is my game. She points to herself with a huge grin on her face. Since you seem no knowledgeable, since you seem no so knowledgeable, it's my turn to ask you a question. How did you know my full name? Did a friend recommend my restaurant to you, or maybe a family member? Uh, no, no, nothing like that. Lady Edith sent me. Lady Edith? Her eyes widen. Whoa! I didn't expect a noble woman to recommend my restaurant. What'd she say? Did she say she liked the food or the atmosphere? She practically leans her entire body over the counter in excitement. Tell me everything. 
Uh, she just wanted me to get a book from you. It's overdue. Ow. She gets an embarrassed expression, quickly escaping back to the other side of the counter, brushing herself off. <clears throat> a book, huh? Uh, did I check out any books in the library recently? Um... She taps her finger against her chin playfully. She thinks about your question. Uh, you would have checked it out a month ago or something? Oh! I did check out a book a month ago, didn't I? Hang on. She leans down, beginning to rummage around in some shelves under the countertop. She hums as she works, moving some heavy objects around on the shelves before her eyes light up. Aha! There we go! She stands up straight, handing you a hefty book. The complete book of baking. I think this is it. Cool. Thanks. Why, why is it slippery? Ivy giggles a bit, rubbing the back of her neck awkwardly. <laughs> that would be fish oil. I was trying to practice making some cakes and may or may not have made a little bit of a mess instead. A, a, a little? But that's okay, right? I mean, you could totally still read it. It's just got a different smell now. <laughs> huh. She waves you away. And now that you got your hands on it, you can get back to Lady Edith. No harm, no foul. Tell her I say hi, and she should come over and try some of our new, our new lobster special. Huh. Uh, in the meantime, is there anything else I can do for you? Huh. Well, I would ask what's on the menu, but I definitely can't afford it. So, uh... <laughs> uh, how about we talk about you? What? I'm not on the menu. The girl pauses, blinking. Oh, you mean you want to talk? Sure, I can suppose I can spare a couple minutes. She decides she places her elbows on the counter and rests her chin in her hands. So, uh, who are you? I already told you that, silly. My name is Ivy. I own the restaurant you're standing in. She waves to all of her patrons. I like doing everything from serving to cooking. I can help for my staff, obvious. I have help for my staff, obviously, but I really love taking a hands-on approach with new customers. Well, then where are you from? I grew up here. Living by the coast gave me an appreciation of underwater delicacies just barely out of our grasp. My dad was a fisherman, see, and my mom was a sailor. She pulled into the harbor one day, one thing led another, and now I'm here. That was a lot of information. Oh, sorry. But yeah, I guess you could say I learned my love of fish from them. Now I run a seafood restaurant. Crazy, huh? Uh-huh. Wait, new cus- how'd you know I was a new customer? Hmm? Are you asking I knew you were a new customer? She asks before giggling. <laughs> I've memorized the faces of all my customers, silly. She pauses for a moment before leaning in close to whisper to you, placing one hand on the other side of her mouth. Well, actually, there are too many people who come through here for me to remember them all. I just make sure one floorboard in here is really squeaky and tell regulars to avoid it if they don't want to pay 10% extra for their food. Wait, does that mean you're being charged extra right now? Yep. Ivy confirms, but I'm making your food for your. I'm making your food myself. So if you want me to keep giving you special treatment, feel free to keep stepping on that floorboard. Huh. Well, that's all. Boy, all that talking sure made me hungry. How about you? She tilts her head, seemingly waiting to hear what you want next. I am hungry, but I definitely can't afford it. I, I'm. I'm just. I'm sorry. That, that's it for now. Uh, thank you. Uh, bye bye. I hope to see you again soon. She, Ivy smiles at you as you turn to leave. She calls after you as you leave. And tell all of your friends about the flying fish! Huh. She is enigmatic and quirky. Well, now we have the complete book of baking. It's sticky version, though. I don't want to place this in my bag. Oh, whatever. Okay. Let's just uh, get back to the library. That wasn't that bad. The restaurant is called the Flying Fish, but it isn't flying, nor is it a fish. A scam, I say, a scam. <laughs> On a seafood. Well, maybe if Ellis lets us keep some of the money we get sometime, we can get some food. But, uh, till then, no. 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 Let's see. Hmm. Pockets do be a thing. You think this giant... A textbook is gonna fit in my pocket? Oh, thank you for the hydrates. And Chris, thank you for the raid. Delicious. I wonder if they serve flying fish. Oh, that could be their specialty. Or maybe they're like one of those like um restaurants that like name their like restaurant after like a uh, creature or like a thing in the world, you know?
Do they sell swordfish? Who knows? Maybe we'll go back to this when we have money. It definitely seems like it could be interesting. I love seafood, so. I just had five cups of coffee and I'm very hyper right now. Well, welcome to stream then, Kathy. <laughs> I hope I can sate your hyper, hyper needs. I have to say, people in Arrow must get these not sides considering how much walking around is required. Yeah, and how many staircases there are. Rex, do your legs feel weak? Nah, I actually feel excited. I could run across the city. Okay, I definitely couldn't run across the city that much, but I'm definitely, like, doing pretty well right now. Cardio? We're cardioing right now? We're running to and fro. Too many stairs. I'd die? Yeah. Yeah, B2. I don't know what it is about this, this world. I'm not really having an issue here. But to be fair, I do walk everywhere I need to go in the real world, too. I don't exactly drive. Well, I can drive, but I don't really drive. I prefer to walk. You trip if you run across the sea. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Even if you're right. Are there swords with actual- Are there swordfish with actual swords in this world? <gasps> that would be so dope. Where the people in Arrow wouldn't have that out like that. <laughs> Would it hurt them to install an elevator? Yeah, like a little wooden lift to go down these cliff sides. Do you have a thin tail? I definitely don't have a tail. I would feel a tail. I do have really cool pointy horns. I think that's it, though. And according to, uh, Ambrosia... She also said our blood's, like, special or something, which is kind of cool. I never imagined me having special blood. I thought I just had normal blood. Like, you know, one of the normal types. You know, there's, like, A and B and AB. In this world, do I have, like, C blood? <gasps> wait, wait, do, wait, do I have blood C? Blood type C? <laughs> Blood type Rex? <laughs> Wait, no, I'm a Tread, so it'd be blood type D, right? <laughs> Do you have any hidden powers? I got a cool magic focus thing that shoots fire. Blood type R. <laughs> or is it R negative? A map to know where everything is. Oh, a map. A map would be worth its weight in gold. I wonder if there is one. It's not like a um like a theme park where they have like the maps of like you are here. That would be really useful. <laughs> Let's see. We're back at the library. Okay, we gotta hand in the second book. Oh, the door is closed. Oh no! Can I open it? I cannot open this door. <laughs> Why is it closed? <laughs> Alright, let's go. Hey, I've got another book! I have the complete book of baking! Once again, you approach the central desk where Lady Edith would be standing. She has a couple steps in Let's try that again. <laughs> Once again, you approach the central desk where Lady Edith would be standing. She has a couple stacks of books in front of her, which she's sorting into a number of smaller piles. Alice would still be at her table, but the book in front of her would be open in her hands. She reads through every page carefully before putting a hand up to her mouth in a surprise. Oh my god, Charles, you sneaky devil! Well, she's having fun. As you approach, Lady Edith gives you her same smile. Hello again, Rex. I trust you had an easier time locating Ivy Gates, yes? Yep. Took the book right here. Uh, but be careful, it's... Before you could finish, Lady Edith would reach out to gently take the recipe book from you. However, as soon as her hands touch the book, she withdraws them in surprise. Oh, dear. She looks down at her fingers, rubbing them together. What in rem is this substance on the book, Rex? Uh, fish oil, apparently. Ah, 
She state she hesitates, looking around for something to wipe her hands on. Eventually, she locates a handkerchief on the desk, picking it up and cleaning the oil off her fingers. Goodness, I can't accept a book back in such a condition. The oil will get all over the other books. Not to mention the smell. <clears throat> she sighs. Oh, Willow will not be happy to hear about this. We may have to throw it away. Well, I don't know about that. It's still readable. It's just a little fishy. Legible or not, I doubt anyone would want to check it out again. She frowns. Although, you do have a point. It would be a waste of a perfectly good recipe book, wouldn't it? Lady Edith purses her lips, bringing her clean hand to her chin, considering the options. Eventually, she would look back up at you. Hmm, perhaps? If you'd like, Rex, you can keep the book. Wait, really? I can't be- it can't be returned to the library in that condition. She shakes her head. But you're right. I'd hate to throw it away when it's still usable. I guess that's fair. I've just... never thought about... baking. Well, there's a first time for everything, right? <laughs> I've heard plenty of people say the same thing when they came here for the first time. But isn't the point of the library to find new things to learn and experience? She clears her throat. <clears throat> but that's neither here nor there. You made quick work with those first two books. You're quite good at this, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm getting the hang of it. <laughs> getting the hang of it. Alice mocks you from her table, flipping over to another page in her book. She gasps. <gasps> Reginald, you did not! Lady Edith picks up one of the pages on the desk. She looks back up at you with a serious, curious expression. In that case... Perhaps you'd be willing to help me with a particularly difficult case? Wait, difficult how? Lady Edith slides the paper over the desk, motioning for you to read it. This book was taken quite recently. However, while it's not necessarily overdue, the checkout process was never completed. It's library policy to note down contact information of anyone checking out a book, so that person can be sent reminders of the book's due date. She motions to several empty lines in the paper. But as you can see, they did not leave any of this information. They simply gave a name. Alvar. Alvar. Since the book was not officially checked out, we have no choice but to consider it stolen until further notice. She takes the paper from you, setting it back behind the desk. I just want you to try and find Alvar and retrieve the book. You can let them know that if they wish to continue reading the book, they can always come back and check it out properly. Do you think you're up to the challenge? <laughs> Are you kidding? Challenge is my middle name. Doubt it, Alice calls over from her table. I quite like your confidence, Lady Edith smiles. Of course, in a city as large as Erwin, it may seem daunting to find a single person among hundreds. She motions around the library. Therefore, perhaps you can find some clues here in the library itself? Willow tells me we have several regulars. Perhaps one of them has seen Alvar. Or perhaps Alvar is one of those very regulars. I could try asking around. Sure thing. Good luck, Rex. If you have any difficulties, do not hesitate to let me know. She nods to you. Okay. So now we just need to ask around. Hmm. Uh, they seem too busy. These people are just looking around. You? Maybe? No. Hmm. Let's try checking upstairs. Unless there's someone tucked away around here. Nah. Alright, let's go upstairs. Ooh, uh, this place is huge! It's actually enormous! Oh, maybe you? Hello! You notice a young woman sitting in a corner of the building. She has some round reading glasses resting on her nose, and a huge stack of books to her left. She would carefully read over the pages of the book in front of her with narrow eyes. Hmm. She nods after a moment, setting the book down to pick up a different one, perhaps to compare information? <clears throat> Excuse me? She looks up at you. Uh, yes? Did you need something? 
I was just wondering, uh, do you know anyone named Alvar? She blinks at you. Alvar? She repeats before shaking her head. No, sorry, I don't know anyone by that name. Are they an author? No, or, well, at least I don't think so. They came here recently to check out a book. Lots of people come here to check out books, she shrugs. But that sort of thing's none of my business. I'm just here to study. She looks back down at her books. If you're looking for a specific patron, why not try asking someone who actually works here? Good point. Uh, no, thanks. Okay, someone who works here. Someone who works here. Oh, Lion Diamond, thank you for the follow. Welcome to stream. Uh, I don't see anyone. Maybe they know where someone that works here is? You approach a young man and woman who are sitting together at a table. The young man points to a book between them. Yeah, but it says here that you need spider eyes. I know, but I'm telling you that you can use slime cubes as a substitute. That'll turn it into gelatin. Not if the heat is high enough. Uh, yo, can I interrupt for a sec? They both glance up at you. The man clears his throat, turning his chair to face you fully. <clears throat> uh, sorry, you need something? We're not being too loud, are we? Oh, no, no, no. Um, I don't work here. That I was wondering if you've seen anyone that does? Uh, any workers, huh? The two look at one another. Uh, I don't think I saw anyone. Uh, I'm not sure. I may have seen the librarian Willow, but I don't know how long ago. I think she just went upstairs, but again, I don't know how long ago that was. She might not be up there still. Oh, well, thanks. So Willow went up here. That was the green-haired girl, right? Where is she? Oh, there she is! Hello! Willow would carefully be tracing her hand along the spines of the books. D-A, D-A, D-A-R, D-W. Oh, here it is! D-I-A. She picks up a book from a nearby table and slides it into place on the shelf. There you go, right where you belong. She steps back with her hands on her hips, smiling. Hey, Willow. She quickly slaps her hand over her mouth to look back over at you in surprise. Her eyes glitter with recognition as she slowly brings her hand away. Oh my god, it's just you, Rex. You almost gave me a heart attack. Oh, uh, uh sorry, I uh, just had a quick question for you. A question? And suddenly your entire face would seem to glow with excitement. Did you need a book recommendation, maybe? I have dozens of wonderful books that I'd be more than happy to introduce you to. Are you looking for something long? A series, maybe? Wait, did you want fiction or nonfiction? She looks you up and down. You seem like the type to enjoy some action in your books. I have a series of autobiographical adventures by- you, Hang on, I'm, I'm not here for a book. I just need some info. Info? She raises an eyebrow. Although you can't help but see her expression falter her as she looks down, a bit disappointed. Oh. Right. Sorry, I got ahead of myself. Uh, you're still here on business with Lady Edith. She clears her throat and shakes away her disappointment. <clears throat> what did you want to know? Uh, do you remember checking out a book to someone named Alvar? Alvar? She moans over the name in her mind. I do recognize that name. Isn't that the guy who didn't finish checking out a book? I was just showing that case to Lady Edith earlier. She wants you to find that book? She brings her, her hand to her chin. Mm, I vaguely remember them, sure. But even so, I'm not sure how the information I have will help you find them. Erwin's a big city, after all. Well, I mean, anything helps. Maybe it'll give me a place to start, at least. Mm, if you're sure. Willow sighs. Uh, they came in recently, from what I remember. They only wanted to check out a single book, too. It was a black hardcover book with red accents and a skull on the front. Huh. Sounds creepy. She shrugs her shoulders. It wasn't the most pleasant read either, she states. Definitely not a book I would have recommended. But Alvar seemed interested. So I started filling out her checkout forms, as I would for any patron of the library. Before, however, before I could get all of Alvar's information, they left with the book. I mean, did you see what they looked like? Not really. I couldn't get a good look. 
uh, if it helps, their voice sounded like that of a man, but their ha face and body were obscured by a crimson cloak. Crimson cloak? <gasps> Wait a minute! Do you recognize the description, Rex? I do indeed. The plot thickens. Thanks, Willow. Let me know if you need any more help! Or maybe if you wanted to try any good book recommendations, either one. <laughs> of course. How could I be so blind? Detective Rex is on the case. He's gonna get to the bottom of this. I don't need a Watson to figure out this one. Alright. So, if I were a book thief in a red crimson cloak... Oh, well, hang on. He was just at the restaurant. I'm just gonna go back there. Yeah, I, I'm just gonna go back to the restaurant. Maybe he's still there. Here we go. The chase is on. You can't escape me, Crimson Cloak guy apparently named Alvar. I'm hot on your heels. You won't escape justice. Not justice nor duty. Actually, let's go up this way. It's right here, so maybe we could go around. You can't escape justice. It's my, delu my, my, my duty to be the deliverer of justice. I will, I will bring you to... Um, I don't know, I, I, I'm gonna get that book and I'm gonna bring it back. And then Lady Edith is gonna be like, Wow, Rex, I can't believe you got this book for me. Here's another book for you to go get. And Ellis is gonna be like, good job. You're doing it like really simple and easy. Like, Rex, you make this look so good. I'm truly envious of you and your ability. I'm gonna be like, yeah, Ellis, I'm really cool and amazing. You should have known that when you see me take on a pirate captain and, uh, Almost take on a weird plant thing named a kabloom, you know that my, my skill shines through. You know what Rex? You're right I really haven't been appreciating you as much as I should have been lately. You know what this next job I'll take on why don't you just take a break today? Just really take it easy and just have fun and goof off. I know that's what you love to do in your downtime Yeah, Alice, I think I will thank you Alice for finally recognizing how much I matter to you Of course Rex, you know, I don't say it often, but you know, I really do value your company and appreciate Appreciate you. You are such a cool guy, and man, my life is just so much more interesting with you around. Hey, you didn't have to say that, Ellis. I totally get it. I feel the same way about you. You're a really cool person to be around. If there was anyone that I would get teleported across the world and be stuck with in a huge city, I'd want it to be you again. Aw, oh, thanks, Rex. Hey, no problem, Rex. Alright, wait, what was I doing? Write a book! Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> That tried talking to himself. <laughs> Look away, son. Look away. <laughs> where's, the, where's the way down? I need to get into far marketplace. Oh, it's this way. Okay, it's down this way. Man, wait, have we been spending all day hunting books? We have! The sun is going down! Wow, we... Oh, that's okay. It's all in a day's work, I guess. This is a pretty exhausting job, though. I feel sorry for Willow. I see why Edith wanted her to get help. That's actually really sweet of Edith. Imagine trying to make Willow do all of this herself. This would take days. Food? I am pretty hungry. We'll just finish up the job and then we'll probably grab a bite to eat with Ellis. Yeah, plus she'd have to contend with the maze like layout of Arrowin, which forgot to provide maps. They need tour guides. I need someone to just hand out maps of the amusement park here. so funny too i'm now imagining arrow and months into the future the passing civilians hearing a distant muttering growing closer they sigh that traveler is monologuing to themselves again and go on with their days <laughs> i 
Never had breakfast? I never had breakfast! You're right, I got deprived. Oh, oh, it's right here. I almost walked past it. It's right here. Let's go. Okie dokie, here we go. Oh, we should put this away. There we go. Hello! Uh, oh, dang, he's gone. Wait. You walk back into the restaurant quickly, doing your best to avoid the creaky floorboard as you enter. Ivy would still be standing behind the counter, taking a couple of coins from another patron and giving them a pleasant wave goodbye. Bye! Thanks for coming! Enjoy the rest of your day! And don't forget to tell your friends about the flying fish! Wait, hey, Ivy, question. Hey! Look who's back! Did you change your mind on that lobster special? Don't worry, most people do when they see how amazingly delicious it looks. Uh, that, no, 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 it's not that. Uh, look, there was a guy in a cloak here earlier. Uh, is he still here? Guy in a cloak? She frowns, thinking to herself. Oh, yeah! I think I did see someone like that. He was sitting over there, right? She points towards the man's table from earlier. Yeah, that's it. Is he still here? She shakes her head. Mm, he left not all that long ago, though. If you look around, you'll probably find him in the area. Why? Is he on the library's watch list, too? <laughs> Uh, actually, yeah, he might be. Uh, did he, did he tell you his name, by chance? Well, sure. He put his name in for his order when he came in. I think it was, uh, Alvar, or something like that. Weird name, huh? I see. We're close. I can feel it. Uh, what are we close to, exactly? Were you said enough left to not too long ago? Uh, yeah, maybe 10 or 15 minutes ago, if I were to guess. The game is on. What, what, what game? I I'm confused. Without another word, you leave the restaurant. Oh, here we go. The chase. Let's do this. We we now need a... Oh, crap. Where'd he go? We, we just need a fun. We gotta... Ah, uh, dang. Um, somewhere around here. Let's see. Hmm... Let's look around. Someone else has to have seen where he went. My detective insight tells me that. <laughs> Let's sniff him out. <laughs> Let's find him. The chase is on. You can't escape me, crimson man named Alvar. Uh, maybe you can. Where are you? Uh, excuse me, sirs. Do you know where a, um, oh. As soon as you leave the restaurant, you begin to scan the horizon. If he only left 10 or 15 minutes ago, he couldn't have gotten far. The streets are still fairly crowded. Maybe you could ask someone for directions? Given how bright and obvious the man's crimson cloak is, surely he must have caught someone's attention. Hmm. Before long, you notice two guards standing nearby. They seem to be talking casually with one another, although you, could oca you would occasionally notice them both looking away to keep an eye on the more crowded locales. They would be stationed at the border between the farm marketplace and the Carpera docks. Perhaps they've seen something? You walk over to the two guards casually, holding out a hand to get their attention. They both turn to and salute. Good evening, sir. What can we do for you? Have either of you guys seen a dude in a crimson cloak? They both look at each other and then back at you. As a matter of fact, we have. He walked past us and went deeper into Carpera. He seemed to be in a hurry. Perfect. Thank you. The plot thickens. The chase is on. Alright. Now it's this way. Now we just need to figure out where he is in here. We have him cornered. Right? This is like the edge of the city. He's right around here. Hmm. Hmm. I just gotta find him. It'll be right around here. Ah, oh, crap. I'm running into dead ends. We are right on this. We could not be more on, on on his tail right now. We're gonna get the crap out of this book.
Good evening. I'm one of you. I patrol the night. Protect it from ne'er-do-wells such as book thieves that check out their books improperly and have to recheck them out. Truly, I am doing this city a service. The noble watcher. Oh! You look around the area for some kind of clue or hint. Ivy said that Alvar should be nearby, but you have no idea which direction you would have gone from here. You're already pretty far out from the marketplace. You look up towards the sky. The sun has begun to set, and the stars are shining brighter and brighter in the darkening sky. You'll need to hurry if you want to retrieve the book in time. There must be something or someone you can find. You pause, as your eyes fall on a familiar face. It's that same guard from earlier, patrolling the streets. Maybe he's seen something? You approach the guard, walking with a determined expression. The guard notices you easily and frowns. Hmm. He turns to you fully and crosses his arms. Most guards would consider seeing the same citizen three times in one day to be suspicious. And let me guess, you're not like most guards? I am exactly like most guards. Oh. What do you need this time? Do you have something to report? He scowls. My search in Astra Centrum was fruitless. There were no sightings of suspicious activity. A day's been nothing but quiet. Too quiet. Uh-huh. Say, you wouldn't have been to see a like, a like a certain guy. You continue. He's like this tall, wearing a crimson cloak. Seen anyone like that? Was he suspicious? No, not really. Then you're lucky, the guard states, and crossing his arms to allow them to rest at his sides. I did see someone who matches that description. Oh, which way did he go? The guard points down the path. He walked that way, towards the gate out of Carpera docks. He was walking quickly and keeping his head down. Rather unsuspicious behavior, if you ask me. He clears his throat. <clears throat> now, I need to return to my own duties. If you notice anything suspicious, report it immediately. That is all, citizen. Yeah, that seems about right. Thanks, man. Let's go. Oh, there's another barracks over here. That's cool. All right. The plot thickens. We're closing in. Here comes the ultimate confrontation. We are going to bust him in his game. Let's do this. I am the bookman. <gasps> I spot him! I'm moving in. You rush out of the city to find the cloaked man standing not too far from the gate. He'd have a large hardcover book under his arm. The same book that you recall Willow describing to you. He'd be looking up towards the sky. His shoulders shaking as though he were laughing. Or maybe crying? You, you can't really tell. You walk forward to intercept the man casually. <laughs> Yo, dude. Ah! He turns around quickly, both hands gripping the book possessively. As he looks you up and down, you can see him frown beneath his hood. Okay, now I know this can't be a coincidence. What kind of person even uses that city exit? He lowers his head. You're here for me, aren't you, Dread? You got that right. Ha, <laughs> he grins. How many hours have you mulled over my offer? Only to finally agree to my terms. You've kept me waiting far too long, you know. I'm not here because of your offer. I know what you did, Alvar. You notice his grip on the book tighten further, his knuckles turning white. I have no idea what you're talking about. You took a book from the library, didn't you? You have no proof of that, he quickly retorts. You can't help but smirk and point at him in a dramatic and accusatory manner. <laughs> I have an eyewitness who confirms that a man, Alvar, checked it out. And? How do you know my name is Alvar to begin with, hmm? Ha! I covered my bases, you see. You motion behind you, back towards the city. When I saw you in the restaurant, I knew I could confirm your identity if I went back there. You gave your name to Ivy when you ordered lunch today. She told me that my hunch was correct and that you are Alvar, which is the same name left in the book's checkout form. You put your hands on your hips confidently. <laughs> the man hisses at your argument. You've truly done your research. But since you're so confident, then why don't you answer me this, Dread? 
And the man in the cloak points at you this time. How do you even know I still have the book, hmm? Enlighten me! Dude, it's... It's right there. Under your arm. The hooded figure blinks at you, and then down at the book. He would remain frozen for several moments, trying to calculate his next move. Crap. He curses under his breath before quickly shaking his head and clearing his throat, trying to gain some ground to stand on. <clears throat> You've outdone yourself, it seems. Yeah, well, like I said, I know what you did, Alvar, and I'm here to make it right. <laughs> Much to your confusion, Alvar would begin to laugh and cackle before you. The sound of his laughter takes you aback, and you can't help but shudder. This isn't what you expected at all. You are much more clever than you look, aren't you? Uh, let me guess. You knew who I was the moment you saw me, didn't you? How could you not? A dread like you? <laughs> he motions to his cloak. You knew this cloak was from the Alacromedic the minute you laid eyes on it, right? And after that, you just couldn't let me go. You followed me across the entire city, keeping a close eye over me. And all because of this. He holds up the book. Uh, I, I think you're confused. You knew I stole this book, just like I stole that dagger from the Latona barracks. All for the ancient power it possesses within its pages. And with power like this at my fingertips, I would be capable of destroying the entirety of Eroin myself. He raises the book up to the sky triumphantly. If I could just master the spells within these pages, I'd have the capabilities to overpower even the greater ritualist of vacuous, Blythe! And then no one would be able to stop me! <laughs> I... Uh... I didn't know any of that. Alvar stops in his tracks. What? I, I was just here for the book. Y you, you didn't check it out properly. So, you didn't know about any of the, the cult stuff? Or, uh, the, the, the all-powerful dark magic? Nah, man. You were just here for the book. Yeah. Oh. Crap. Well, you know, after all that, I think I'm just gonna leave. Well, I'll, hang on! I can't just let you live after all that! Alvar steps forward threateningly. What if you were to squeal to the city guard? You can see the problem with that, right? <laughs> Look, man, it's really none of my business! It wasn't. You made it your business. And now? You're going to suffer the consequences. Okay, seriously, I won't tell anyone, okay? I swear! You think you're so tough, huh? Then why not be the first to witness my true potential? Yo, can I pass? te Emma. Wait. Hang on. Um... <clears throat> Ten Look, man, you can't just talk about this. Ten. You're evil, what? I get it. But I'm just trying to pay the bills. Behold! <laughs> oh my god, what is that thing? No crap! Focus! Okay! Oh, and there are things! Okay, you know what? This is fine. This is okay! What is this? What are these weird portals? What? Go over here! Got it! Alright. What are these creatures? Okay, okay, right, right, just gotta keep going. Alright, alright. 
Alright, I'm nailing this. Come on! Whoops, I just hit on fire! <laughs> Creatures! What are these things? They're like the things that like, came out of that weird gate in the mausoleum, except not as bad. Huh. Of our size, you cut down another one of the creatures from the strange portals. Oh my god! Those things are horrifying! He turns back towards you. Oh, good job making quick work of them, Trad! Yeah. Yeah, thank- w Wait! You turn to him in utter confusion. Why are you complimenting me? You're trying to kill me! You both stare at each other for a moment, entirely frozen. Alvar would make the first move, jumping away and throwing the book open once more. Why could you not?! He flips through the fate pages quickly, scanning over every line for a new magical phrase. Eventually, he stops on one, narrowing his eyes and leaning closer to read it. C come on, come on, what's that say? Uh, Naturia vis imperavi ut fascius mum imperium! You can feel magic surging through the air, conglomerating around Alvar. Oh, crap! Ha! <laughs> he lifts his hand towards the heavens before pointing his exposed palm at you. A glow connects in his palm. That's more like it! Now take this, Dread! He pumps his arm through the air, firing rather small and... Honestly, kind of sad projectiles in your direction. You quickly duck out of the way of the projectiles, scrambling through the dirt as you hear the grass behind you shriveling up and dying. As weak as it looks, so what exactly is that projectile doing? What the heck is that? The strange magic causes your hair to stand on end. So what kind of dark spells are those? Alvar curses under his breath at the projectiles. Oh, come on, can't it be any bigger? Dang it! Get the book. The voice sends a strong shiver down your spine. You look around to try and identify its origins, but you and Alvar would be the only people around. It leaves you with only a single command. You look back up at Alvar, your gaze focusing on the tome in his hand. Huh? This is a good thing the book was already my target. Bring it on then! Oh, okay! <laughs> that is magic! Who are these things? Okay! Not good. That's what they are. They're not good. Oh! Hi! They're monsters! These weird portals! Okay! I just need to stay away from that stuff, that weird purple crackling stuff. That's decaying the grass. Alright, that deals with that. And that gets that. Ow! I'm not doing too hot. It's okay. I'm keeping up. I think. Give me that book! Oh, those spells are dangerous! I just gotta avoid it. That's all I gotta do. Is I just gotta stay away and I'll be okay. Give me that book! Uh, come on! How are you not dying? Alvar snaps at you. You're so strangely nimble, it's weird! Hey man, you're the one opening random portals of that stolen library book! Well, this stolen library book's gonna make the kingdom of Erwin fall at my feet! He counters. If I could just get rid of you! He continues to flip through the book, looking for something else. Just, just, just give me a second to find something that will get rid of you! Well, or you could just not! He starts to read something else from the book. Uh, Maledictus Potestas Corpore Meovase Uteris! What, what are you? Did you just say utter? However, your statement gets cut off in your throat as Alvar's entire body would begin to glow. He looks down at himself in shock and confusion. Eh? Crimson magic starts to pulsate from his form, causing his eyes to widen in fear. What's happening? Well, how should I know? You're the one that did this! The pulsating magic continues as he begins to run toward you, his expression one of terror. Help me! Oh no! Nah, leave me alone! 
Ah, stay away! No, 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 no! What is that weird stuff coming off of him? No, no, stay back! Stay back! Stay back! Okay. I just gotta keep killing things. Oh, he's freaking out. No, stay back! Oh, those red particles, those are terrifying. Oh, God. No, we're fine. I just set myself on fire. No, stay back! Stay back! Leave me alone! Okay. Kill that thing. Ah! Stay away! Stay away! Alvar pants for a bit after putting his hands on his knees and catching his breath for a moment. <sighs> what the heck is this? How do I stop it? Well, I don't know, man. Maybe give up the book? No! He snaps. I'm falling for that. It's the oldest trick in the book. There's no way I'm just giving you what you want. Look, dummy. He pulses with crimson magic once again. Ah, this is so weird! Help me! Why are you asking me for help? You start sprinting as Alvar begins to chase after you once again. Come on, just do me this little favor! The favor? You want to kill me? Stop running already! Alvar lunges forward. In an instant, you scramble to your left to avoid him, causing Alvar to run directly into a tree. Gah! The tree shudders, causing him to stumble backward dizzily. Uh... You narrow your eyes at Alvar as he starts to recover from his impact with the tree. You snap your head to and fro, looking around at the several at several of the trees scattered around the area. Okay. Now I have an idea. Stay away! No, oh, stay back! No! Ah! Hold on, hold on. This is a little moron. He's barely paying attention to where he's running, right? So I can just... All I have to do is just... Ah! Okay! Okay! Great! Great! I just have to... Oh, I have to keep making moves. I can keep doing that. If I get him to knock himself out, we'll be good. He can't keep using the magic if he's unconscious. Ow! No, stay back! Stay back! Stay back! Okay. No, stay back! Stay away from me! Here he comes. Alright, 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 all right. Genius plan right here. Genius plan. The biggest scam bit. Got him! Alright, alright, alright! Wait, that's gotta get him, right? He's looking like he's swaying now. Okay, surely one more will do it. Go here! Ow! Ow, I didn't see that one. I ain't got those guys. And there he is. And I'm stumbling his way back. Alright, here we go! For all the marbles! Yeah! Huh. Yeah? I did it! Alvar falls backward to the ground, the collision with the tree finally dazing him. The tome in his hand flies to the ground at his side, however. However, he makes no immediate move to stand and instead rise in the dirt. Uh... You want to stay down now? He doesn't respond. Carefully, you step forward. Experimentally nudging him with your foot. He wouldn't even flinch. <laughs> huh. You lean down, resting your elbows on your knees as you stare at him. You reach out and pick up the book from his side. You brush the dirt off the tome and observe the cover. Sure enough, it's the same book that Willow told you about. A black hardcover with red accents and a skull on the front. You can't help but notice its shape and structure. 
It reminds you heavily of the book you found in the mausoleum. You feel curiosity weighing inside of your mind as you look upon the strange book. Why is it so similar to your own magic text? Before you realize, you slowly begin to move your fingers across the cover, threatening to open it and flip the pages for yourself. However, before you can get any further in your investigation, you hear the clanging of metal boots rushing closer and closer. You look back toward the entrance of the city docks and find the same guard familiar rushing into the fray. Another individual would walk behind him, scarlet eyes gleaming even in the darkness of the early night. Oh, uh, hey! I think I found the suspicious activity you were looking for, man! T the guard narrows his eyes. So the saying is true. Evil never sleeps. He looks back up at you. What happened here? This guy just lost it and started hurling spells out of this book? It, it was crazy! Lieutenant Higgins. A commanding voice sounds from the other individual, interrupting your statement. A woman would walk forward, looking over the scene carefully. As your superior, you'll refrain from asking questions to potential witnesses. I'll need you to investigate the crime scene and locate any possible illicit materials or substances. Additionally, I order you to examine that man on the ground while I ask the witness for an official report of the situation. Yes, Captain. Captain? You stare at the woman as she walks over to you, placing her hands behind her back calmly. Explain what happened. Despite her appearance not being overly intimidating, you can't help but feel smaller, as though she's towering over you, and the sheer atmosphere of authority that she exudes is suffocating. R right uh... You start to try and explain the situation to the woman. Oh, this guy totally just lost it. He started reading all kinds of crazy stuff and blasting magic all over the place. Hmm. Unlicensed usage of magic within Erwin borders. I see. However, she narrows her eyes at you. As a citizen of Erwin, it was your duty to report this activity directly to a guard. Instead, giving your opponent's incapacitated state, you engaged in an unofficial duel creating a disturbance. Well, I didn't have much of a choice! Who's opening portals with this book?! You motion to the book. As soon as you do this, the woman's eyes would visibly widen. She quickly walks forward, her gaze following the book in your hand. Drop the book! Immediately! She unsheaths a blade at her side, pointing it directly at you. Her eyes glint as you instinctively raise your hands up and surrender. Whoa, 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 whoa! You comply quickly, dropping the book into the grass. She keeps her blade pointed at your throat as she kicks the book behind her and out of your reach. T Higgins, arrest the man on the ground. Add to the incident report that two individuals are found in possession of a Crimson Rights book. She speaks to the guard nearby. Yeah, he seems pretty out of it, the guard Higgins tells his captain. Then he may explain his side of the Saurian court. Uh, what is going on? As for you, the woman turns to you once more. You are under arrest until the Court of Erwin decides your innocence. But why am I being arrested? I didn't do anything! He did all the crazy magic stuff! You were caught in possession of a dangerous magical text. You'll have plenty of time to plead your case in front of the Grand Judge. The woman, her blade still head held up in a threatening manner, grabs you by the shoulder to turn you around, withdrawing some metal cuffs from her belt. Oh, Ellis is gonna kill me. Ah, Admiral, wait a moment! Another voice calls out. You crane your neck to glance back towards the voice to see Lady Edith rushing into the fray, her curls a bit undone and sweat running down her brow. Lady Edith? Miss Windsor, the woman pauses. I'm going to have to ask that you remove yourself from this area. This is an active crime scene. Please just listen, Lady Edith states, walking forward more. I'm not sure what's going on, but whatever it is, I can assure you that Rex is innocent. With all due respect, this dread was found in, with a dangerous tome in his possession. I cannot simply allow such a transgression to go unpunished. Such an action would endanger the safety of the people of Erwin. A dangerous tome? No, that can't be. He was just retrieving a missing library book, that's all. Lady Edith shakes her head. I have no idea how you got here, but you couldn't have had better timing. Your friend and I both became worried waiting for you at the library, she explains. She was growing tired and decided to go back to the inn, where I presume you both are staying. However, I couldn't help but grow more and more concerned as time went on. I would feel absolutely horrid if you stayed out this late just to find a single book for me. So I decided to go out and find you myself. 
Hang on a moment. This book belongs to the Stelliform Library? The authoritative woman glances back at the tome she kicked behind her. Yeah, I was just trying to get it back for Lady Edith. The woman is quiet for some time, looking between you, the noblewoman, and the book. Eventually, she just scoffs, withdrawing the handcuffs from her wrist and sheathing her blade. She walks over to the book and picks it up, turning to Lady Edith. I'm afraid that this book is far too volatile to be sitting on the shelf of a public library. What is it, Admiral? If I may ask, of course. It's called The Crimson Rites. I'm not certain of the details, but I know that these books have been found with several criminals outside of the city walls. Their, suppo their purpose with these books is unknown. However, the mages of Erewhon were able to identify its contents as dangerously dark magic. Yep, that tracks. The woman, apparently just called Admiral, turns back to you. Can you confirm that you identified that man as the perpetrator of this attack? She motions back to Alvar, as Private Higgins hoists him up to his feet and places him in handcuffs. Uh, what? Who are you? Where am I? Why is the world spinning? Alvar's words all slur together as he slowly starts to recover. Yeah, apparently he's been doing evil stuff all day. Elaborate, the woman demands. Well, first I met him in this creepy alleyway. He was trying to get me to join him or something, you explain. Then he went to the Latona barracks and stole a knife. And when I found him out there, they started talking about using the book to destroy the city. Oh my, Lady Edith places a hand over her mouth. Hey, come on, man, don't go spilling all my secrets. Alvar shakes his head. You hear the cuffs click into place around his wrists. He tried to kill me after explaining his whole plan, too. I'm so sorry, Rex, Lady Edith states. Had I known this would have happened, I wouldn't have asked for your help. However, if you didn't, who knows what would have happened to the city? The guard captain ponders. She grimaces, however. But in the future, such matters are to be handled strictly by the guard of Arrowin. Consider yourself lucky that Lady Edith stepped in to protect you from prosecution. Right. Uh... Captain. Hagen's voice sounds from nearby. The captain continues. As for the book, Lady Edith, I'm not sure how the library came into possession of such a text, but I'm afraid I cannot return it to you. I'm going to have to confiscate it for the safety of the people of Erowyn. I see, Lady Edith sighs. I'm unaware of how long it's been there as well. Please, do what you must. Do not let me interfere with your job. Captain. Furthermore, I'll require an official state incident report on your behalf, my lady. If you're sure that this threat is innocent, that I'll need formal documentation to waive his involvement with criminal activity tonight, she continues. As for you, Dredd, I'll also need you to fill out a report of the incidents you witnessed the suspect doing. I'm not sure how our guards could miss such obviously suspicious activity, but- Admiral, for the love of you already what, Higgins? He got away. What?! You look over towards Private Higgins. Just a moment ago, he was in the middle of cuffing Alvar. But now, you find him standing in the grass alone with the handcuffs around his own wrists. His captain stares at him in utter shock, his, her fists clenching in anger. Oh boy. Higgins? Where's the suspect? I don't know, ma'am. He escaped. You were just in the process of arresting him. That is correct. Did, did you want that report now, or just go? The woman waves her hand at both you and Lady Edith, motioning for you to leave. <clears throat> Let us make our exit, Rex. Lady Edith nods to you. We can talk more within the city walls. Right. Okay. All right. What a wild adventure. Oh, I've been chasing books all day. As soon as you're back behind the city's walls, Lady Edith turns to you and sighs. I'm sorry about this, Rex. It appears that book created quite the disaster. It's not your fault. Yeah, no, it was apparently super evil. Well, if I was aware of its capabilities, I would have never kept it on the shelf. She agrees. 
Thank goodness you managed to stop that man before he caused more damage. And I was just doing the job he gave me. Had to get the book back, that's all. <laughs> and that's quite sweet of you, but you don't have to undercut your deed for my sake. She smiles at you. You've been such a great help to me and the Stelliform Library today. I'm not sure what we would have done without your assistance. Well, but I didn't even do much. I only really got one of the three books back. True. However, of those three books, you tackled one of the most difficult cases and gave me and the library staff an excellent starting point. I can have Willow perform the rest of the retrievals herself from here. She draws back a layer of her regal red gown to reveal a hidden pocket underneath. You've done quite enough for today. Therefore, it's about time you've received your reward. From the pocket, she withdraws a decently sized patch of coins. She offers the coins to you with a nod. These are rightfully yours. Whoa! <laughs> Thank you so much! Aww, she gushes. <laughs> it was my pleasure, truly. She lifts one hand and pats the top of your head affectionately. You're just the sweetest young man, aren't you? I'll be sure to mention how much you've helped me today to my friends the next time I see them. It's the least I could do. Hey, <laughs> I appreciate that. Have a good night, Rex, and make sure you get home safely. With that man still on the loose, make sure you're looking after yourself, all right? And with that, Lady Edith would depart, leaving you alone with your payment and a smile. Huh. We nailed that! Woohoo! Let's get home. Huh. Food time? You know what? After that, I don't think I've got an appetite. Maybe later. <laughs> oh, thank you for the hydrate. And thank you, fairy girl, for the follow. Oh my, we'll just get food at the tavern. Oh. oh, that was so exhausting. Just who was that guy? Oh man, and what was anything that he was saying? Alacrim Edict? Greater Ritualist of Vacuos? I don't get it. I I'm just confused. It doesn't make sense to me. Whatever. I guess I don't need to care about it too much right now. I hope I don't see that guy around again. He was so not suspicious. That completely got me off guard. I didn't expect him in the slightest until I started to expect him. <sighs> he was an unsuspicious individual. What do you want from me? Well, it's definitely nighttime now. Look how dark it is. But look at how pretty those stars are. And the Aurora Borealis. Beautiful. Please tell me you where you're going. I'm actually getting a pretty good grip on this city already. He was polishing the dagger. He had a really convincing story. That was a pretty fun day, though. Pretty eventful. Exhausting, but eventful. And we got a free book out of it! That was super cool! Granted, the book smells like fish oil. And feels like fish oil. Probably tastes like fish oil. I'm not gonna taste the book. But we got a free book! Oh, let's go this way. Taste the book, Rex, you know you want to. <laughs> I don't- okay, I'm, I, I'm lost. Chat, I'm lost. <laughs> I know I said I wasn't lost, I'm lost. <laughs> Look, alright, the city is a maze! It is an actual maze! I don't know where I'm going! <laughs> If you if you guys are so wise, how about you guide me, huh? How do I get home? <laughs> Maze Road is 2.0. Wait, hold on. I think I know where I am now. Yeah, yeah, Tails Roads. I know this city like the back of my hand. I got this now. 
just like Zoro. <laughs> Yeah, there it is. See, boom, stairs. I knew it. I knew we had this. We had it. Unlock. Oh, I'm going to enjoy the rest tonight, though. That was a great days of work. And this is so awesome. If I get to come back here every time I go to sleep, then I cannot wait to sleep every night. Oh, finally, this gives me a reason to have a sleep schedule. <laughs> Let's see. Now we just need to go this way, and I'm pretty sure the tavern's somewhere around here. Yeah, right. We're, we're right nearby. I remember this tree. There it is. That's the tavern. I think that's our room. T no, our room's on the other end. Here we are. We made it home. Edith said um, Ellis already came here, so I guess we can just like go meet Ellis upstairs. Let's head up. So you're going to just collect books? I think it could be cool. I definitely don't have the space for them though. But we got a free book! It's so cool! Alice, I'm back! Alice? Alice! You walk into the room slowly, your entire body feeling heavy. Alice would sit at her desk, counting a couple of coins and stacking them into separate piles. She leans back in her chair as you enter. Look who finally decided to show up! She pushes her chair out to stand up and meet you. Did you finish the job? Sure did. I drop the pouch of coins into Ellis's grip. She greedily accepts the bag, pulling it open with a grin. Oh yeah, this is what Mama likes to see. She smirks, giving you a rough pat on the back. Not bad, Rex. Maybe you are getting the hang of this. <laughs> yeah, it almost took me getting arrested, but I got it. Come again? Alice immediately snaps her head back in your direction, her expression completely serious. Uh, one of the guard captains thought I was evil because I had a Crimson Rights book on me. Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, that all makes sense. She tosses the pouch onto the table before grabbing you by the shoulders. Start talking. What exactly happened out there? Is that why you're back so late? Uh, pretty much. You begin to explain to Alice everything that happened to you while you were trying to retrieve the third book. Your encounter with Alvar, the strange magic he used, and then your run-in with the second captain of the Aegean Vanguard. Alice listens to you carefully. As soon as you finish your tale, she rests her hand head in her hands. Oh my god. She sighs. Do you even realize how lucky you are? Or is that still going over your head? Yeah, I think I'm getting the idea now. I'd be a goner if Lady Edith didn't show up. You wouldn't be the only one, she groans. Knowing you, I'd be down for the count, too. She seats herself on the bed, mumbling into her palms. Of all the guards for you to run into, of course it had to be the Admiral. Admiral? I thought she was just a captain. The Admiral isn't her status. It's her title. No one knows her full name. They just know that if you get on her bad side, you're one misdemeanor away from landing in prison. She smooths her bangs out of her eyes. She already doesn't seem happy with me. You know, Rex, I'm so happy to hear that. Nothing pleases me more than listening to you talk about our impending doom. You should do it more often! She flops onto her bed dramatically. Oh, we gotta get back to Ren soon, before you can get us into even more trouble. You stare at Alice for a moment, before considering your encounter once more. Alvar, the magic book, the spells, the monsters, all of that seems to have resolved itself, despite Alvar's escape. He won't be able to do any more of that magic without the book. But now, you're only left with one question. What was that unknown voice? You gulp, looking down at the ground. It's the only thing you haven't had the time to really consider. There was definitely a voice, an unsettling one at that, giving you commands and warnings all day. Yo, you good? Well... 
it's just... Oh, God. Alice sits up again. I told you to explain everything. What else did you do, huh? It's not really what I did. I don't know how to describe it. You calmly inhale and exhale. <sighs> During that fight against Alvar, and, and even before then, when I first met him, I heard some weird voice in my head. You shake your head. It was... distorted. And kinda creepy. And it didn't say much, it just... warned me, I guess. Told me what to do to win. Alice pauses, narrowing her eyes at you. Huh. Is that kind of thing normal in Rem? No. Can't say it is. So, so what, am I just going crazy? I don't know, Rex. Alice leans forward, resting her elbows on her knees. Can't say I've ever heard of anything like that. And again, you've always been a walking enigma to me. She frowns. No need to look so nervous. You said the voice was helping you survive, right? So you're probably not dying, if that's what you're worried about. Besides, even if you were dying, you'd just come back afterward. She stands up. If it's really got you all that worked up, I'm sure there's someone in the city who could help you get to the bottom of it. But I don't know if I'm that person. Alright. Chin up, man. Alice's tone softens slightly. You didn't get arrested, and you got us money. I'd say that as far as days go, that's a pretty good one right there. She starts to walk back over to her desk. Try and relax. Take a bit to sit down and just chill out. You've been working all day. <laughs> yeah, I guess I do feel kind of tired. Thanks, Alice. Guess I should just chill out for a sec. <clears throat> so, you're sure that guy said a lacrim edict? I'm sure. What's with that look? Are they really that big of a deal? Let's just say that if they're in the city... We have bigger problems than paying rent on time. Just say